Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 495. 495. July the 18th, 2018. It is Wednesday. That's right, well, Wednesday. <laughs> On Wednesday I take out the trash and I have chicken. Every Wednesday I take out the trash and I have chicken. Well, I'm still pretty angry. But uh, not nearly as much as yesterday, but <clears throat> still pretty angry with what went down around the summit. But we have a few more items to cover from the summit. And uh, then we'll move on from that, and hopefully for good. So we also learned that on the day of the summit, that a Russian national has been charged with conspiracy. This is the actual day of the summit. A Russian national has been charged with conspiracy. The DOJ has arrested Maria Butina on charges that she conspired to infiltrate the um, American political groups to influence U.S. politics. Now this is coming, this comes the same day that, uh, of the summit, and of course we know the day before the summit, they announced that they were indicting 12 Russian intel agents. Now, <laughs> this woman, I saw, I read a story about her, she's uh, a couple stories about her, she's uh, kind of a young, red-headed looking uh, woman, and um, she doesn't look like a spy to me, maybe she is, I don't know. I guess they'll have to present the evidence in court, but if it's like the rest of Uncle Bob's indictments uh, or DOJ indictments, I expect very little will come of it. <clears throat> now she is actually a U.S. person; she is in the U.S., so they don't have to like uh, try to extradite her or anything like that. So <clears throat> anyway, we will find out once the charges are brought against uh, Maria Butina whether or not there is anything really to these charges. I read the evidence; they laid out some of the evidence. Uh, she's you know connected to some people, uh, giving information. She does give information, gets information here in the states. She passes them information back to the uh, to the uh, Russians. But nothing that she's doing is like secret intel or anything like that. There's no secret information. She's not like a spy. Uh, she's just involved in politics, and she transfers information, which is open source information. There's no secrets that she's passing or intelligence secrets or anything like that. She's just involved in political activities. She is a Russian national and uh, she, you know, is working for American firms or whatever. And uh, but she still has connections to people back in Russia. So, you know, I, I don't really know what the illegality is of what she is doing, but I guess they'll try to make that case in court. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if this is just another publicity stunt uh, for Uncle Bob to try to justify his existence. That's what it looks like to me until I see anything different. And of course, one of the highlights, uh, of course, uh, a couple highlights of the summit was a couple things that Putin said. And one of my favorite lines from Putin, which is something I've seen him do multiple times now, whenever he's asked about Trump-Russia collusion. So Putin was asked about it by a reporter, and he told the reporter that um, the collusion with the Trump campaign was utter nonsense. The exact same word he used when he was talking to Chris Ratboy Wallace on Fox News when when Ratboy tried to uh, pin him into that in that corner and uh, that's exactly what Putin said to Chris Ratboy Wallace. He said uh, that's um, basically nonsense, utter nonsense. Then, as he always does, he follows that up by saying, "Can you name a single fact that would definitely prove collusion?" Which is what he's been saying since this whole thing started. He's saying, show us the evidence. No one ever has. Of course, we have Clapper saying that Trump was aiding and abetting. <laughs> well, we're going to find out who was aiding and abetting, Mr. Clapper. Uh, unwittingly. Yeah, you were unwittingly aiding and abetting, I guess is what you're going to tell us, Mr. Clapper, for your traitorous activities. Of course, we even had Newt Gingrich, who, you know, I'm not a big fan of Newt. Uh, never was a big fan of Newt. Uh, he was okay there for a couple of years when he was in the Congress, but he's a deep stater for the most part. And Newt is generally looking to attach himself to anything that's popular to help him peddle his books and, and uh, you know, get paid for a lot of money for giving speeches and things. He's just, a, you know, a money chaser. Uh, former member of Congress who just got out to make make a buck, and he'll make a buck on anyone. You know, if the anti-Trump position was the popular position, he'd be writing that position. 
But we have Newt coming out saying that Trump must correct. Uh, that it's the worst statement of his presidency. And uh, to say he doesn't trust his own intelligence. And, of course, I laid out the case yesterday. I'm not going to go through it again. Of why none of us, especially Trump, should, in, should trust his own intelligence. It's not his intelligence. Those intelligence people don't work for Trump or in his best interest or Newt's interest or your interest or my interest or any American interest. They work in the interest of the deep state. And I can assure you it's not our interest. I can assure you of that. So screw you, Newt. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Newt. He's been going on Fox News now for weeks and weeks and weeks on the Trump train, even talking about how the intel community, Brennan and Clapper and the whole nine yards, where they're setting Trump up, putting spies in the campaign, the whole nine yards, and now all of a sudden he's going to flip and say, yeah, well, Trump shouldn't be criticizing the intelligence agencies, saying he doesn't trust. Yeah, he, he, should, uh, he should trust the very people who tried to frame him and are still trying to frame him. And, and in fact, you have uh, Mr. Potato Head uh, calling for a, a military coup. Uh, coming out in a tweet and saying, yeah, the intelligence agency should not share any intelligence with him. <laughs> These people are real jewels. We have the dishonorable um, former uh, director of the Federal Bureau of um, Insubordination, James Comey, uh, calling for patriots to reject President Trump and uh, calling him a liar. <laughs> James Comey lied at least four times under oath, and we know that. Uh, I do believe that James Comey is going to be indicted at some point, um, calling for patriots to reject Trump. No patriots would support Trump. It's been the uh, opposite of that, the anti-patriots who've been out to get Trump, like you, Mr. Comey. Real patriots would, would find you, Mr. Comey, and uh, hang you from the nearest tree. That's what real patriots would do, Jim. Of course, the biggest bombshell that Putin dropped on the rotten Reverend Clinton uh, was when he was talking about Bill Browder, who we all remember very well because of his testimony in Congress. Of course, uh, he was, um, he was of course the one who testified in Congress and, and put out all the dirt on Confusion GPS because it was Confusion GPS working with Vessel Naskaya who were hired to counter Mr. Browder. Browder. Now, so we all saw his uh, testimony in Congress. So Putin lays out that Mr. Browder sent $400 million uh, to the Clinton campaign. Now, that's the word that Putin used, Clinton campaign. I think what he meant was the Clinton Foundation. I think he means that the Rotten Reverend Clinton laundered $400 million, uh, helped uh, Mr. Browder like she does many other people. Because that's what the Clinton Foundation is. It's a... It's a money laundering. Uh, um, it's a money laundering tool for all of Hillary and all of her globalist friends. They launder money through the uh, Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative. So uh, it was four hundred million dollars, most likely, is what Putin was talking about to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, Mr. Browder was laundering four hundred million dollars, and as Putin points out, that money was uh, originated with, you know, Russian oligarchs many of whom are uh, no friends of Putin's. They're like anti-Putin oligarchs. And uh, that's where that money came from. And, of course, that's one reason why Putin's upset about it. And the other reason is he said, hey, they paid no tax on that money in the U.S. or in Russia. And that's why he was going after them. Um, so tax evasion or whatever. They, you know, Russia has a, a tax system just like we do. Uh, well, not exactly like ours. They have a flat tax, but... Um, but yeah, they go after tax cheats too, just like uh, any country would, and that's why they were after Mr. Browder and uh, investigating him and investing a lot of this money that uh, was being moved through this uh, um, financial uh, uh, entity that existed in Russia. Uh, and Mr. Browder had, of course, hired an attorney who was uh, helping him with his case, and that attorney was, uh, of course, allegedly killed by Putin or the Russians or whatever, and this is kind of how this whole thing got started. But, of course, we know that in that particular uh, press conference, 
Putin, of course, made it public knowledge that he would be interested. He said, hey, we'll help uh, uh, Uncle Bob with his Russia investigation. He can talk to these 11 uh, uh, so-called spies that he says were involved. Uh, we'll cooperate with that. But we'd like some cooperation on the other end from the U.S. government on this uh, stuff with Mr. Browder and the $400 million, which, oh, by the way, was all laundered through the Clinton Foundation. And uh, Putin says that he believes that there had to have been U.S. intelligence officials involved in moving that kind of money through the Clinton Foundation without it being detected. You can't move $400 million anywhere without it being tracked and, and detected and studied. And, and the intelligence agencies would have done that, but for whatever reason, they didn't blow the whistle on the rotten reverend. And Putin wants to know why. Well, we have new text messages that uh, popped up on Monday between Lisa Page and Andy McCabe, providing more clear evidence that the White House, Obama, was deeply involved in the Trump-Russia investigation. These texts are from October the 14th of 2016, just a month, less than a month, before the November election. And uh, so in these texts, if I just read you the, the couple of the texts without context, it's hard to know exactly what the text is referring to. So basically, these texts are texts between Lisa Page, and she's the sender, McCabe's the receiver on these texts, where Page is telling McCabe that the DAG, that will be the Deputy Attorney General, which would have been Silly Sally Yates, Silly Sally Yates wanted to attend a meeting and the White House wanted the Department of Justice to host the meeting. And this meeting, if you look at it again in context to all the other things that we're talking about in this conversation, they were talking about the Trump-Russia uh, collusion investigation. That's what they were talking about. So here's a, here's a text of Page to, Sally, uh, to uh, McCabe, uh, letting him know that Sally Yates and uh, the Department of Justice were going to be essentially chairing this meeting and that was at the request of the White House. That would be Obama. More evidence. I mean, we've got so much evidence now that, uh, I mean, we have direct evidence. I mean, these are, this is, this is pretty much direct evidence. I mean, of course, we actually have the, the previous tweets between Strzok and Page, where, where, where Page says basically the White House wants to know everything that we're doing. I mean, it's, it's, there's, there's no question that the Obama administration, the entire Obama administration, the State Department, the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, the whole nine yards, the whole group of them, it was a massive, coordinated, collaborated effort at a frame-up. Exonerate the rotten Reverend Clinton and frame Trump. That was it. It's not that complicated. It's really not. And it is exactly what it looks like. If it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, if it barks like a duck, it's probably a duck. The rotten reverend, the rotten reverend, she tweeted the night before the summit to Trump, quote, do you know what team you play for? Unquote. Well, you know, reverend, it's so easy. I mean, this is easy. This is really easy. Do you know what team you play for to Donald Trump? I think it's pretty obvious what team he plays for. Look how well America's doing since he's been president compared to how poorly we were doing when your good friend Barack Hussein Obama was running the show, along with you, Reverend. And how was the rest of the world doing under your leadership as Secretary of State, Reverend, with the chaos, uh, the death and destruction going on in Syria, uh, Egypt, green revolutions all over Europe and North Africa, all under your watch, Reverend. All under your watch. But you're suggesting, Reverend, that Trump uh, is somehow some kind of a Russian or Russian asset or uh, uh, more of a team player for the Russians in America, when the facts would illustrate exactly the opposite. But let's look at your track record, Reverend. See what team you were playing on. Well, let's see. After paying millions for the dossier and selling 20% of our uranium to Russia in exchange for $160 million to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, you also had your hubby uh, there, Slick Willie, 
the accused rapist, gathering $500,000 for a one-hour speech, and afterwards he went and had a personal meeting with Putin at Putin's home. Then, of course, we learn that you got $400 million from Bill Browder, whose father, by the way, was once the head of the Communist Party. The Rotten Reverend. What team do you play for, Reverend? Of course, we had Paul Ryan slamming Trump. Why not? Why not? He's a traitor. I can't wait till big ears Eddie Munster Paul Ryan is gone. The fact that we got to suffer with this guy for another what? Let's see. Oh, God, we got to get through August, September, October, November. Hopefully, he'll leave right after the, the midterm. Hopefully he'll leave after the midterm. Republicans not, can vote for new leadership and he'll leave after the midterm. If that son of a bitch sticks around until January or February, I'll be pissed. I wish he'd just leave now. He should just leave now. He does no good. He's doing more harm than good. He's not really even raising all that much money. For a speaker, speaker of the house usually is a guy who can go out and raise unlimited money. It's just how much time have you got? But he's not out really trying to raise a lot of money for the party. He hasn't really... He's not leading anything. He doesn't really have any agenda. He's not trying to nationalize uh, the, 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 the effort across the country. He's not taking advantage of the massive weaknesses of the Democrats. He just He's just horrible. I mean, from Eric Cantor, or would have been Eric Cantor, to him, Boehner. I mean, we have got to, they've really got to think long and hard and be very careful about who they elect as speaker this next time around. Jim Jordan would be fantastic. If we had Jim Jordan... Those documents and those witnesses and this entire Spygate thing might already have already been unraveled. It might be over. These people might already be, you know, facing indictments with the special counsel or special prosecutor or whatever. Uh, this might already all be going down. It's Paul Ryan primarily dragging his feet. And he never comes out and really takes any... He's just not a very good leader. I mean, he's in this number one leadership position. He's just a poor leader. He's done, he's done nothing. Just wish he would go. Go already. Well, it appears now that uh, turnabout is fair play, since Uncle Bob the Executioner and the DOJ have decided to start arresting all sorts of individuals uh, who are Russian or have Russian descent or have connections to Russian business or Russian government officials. They're all spies all of a sudden. They're all spies, part of uh, Uncle Bob's effort to uh, run his cover-up operation. Well, it appears that Russia now is going to play the same game. So now Russia has arrested a spy that they say was working for the CIA. His name is Sergei uh, Mikhailov, and he is alleged to have provided information to the CIA uh, uh, that Putin's intelligence agencies hacked and meddled in the American presidential election. Hmm. Now this would really be a person of interest because this is a person who is being alleged uh, as being someone who gave information to American CIA officials pertaining to hacking or meddling in the election. It'll be interesting to find out, and it might be hard to do because this is in Russia. He is in Russia. This is a Russian's uh, government arresting him, and he's in Russia. And how much information will get out, I don't know, but it would be, it'd be nice if we could find out exactly who Mr. Uh, uh, Mikhailov was communicating with. But this could also produce some very damning information because uh, if the Russians can get this guy to talk, and I'm pretty sure they can, they could learn some things from him. My question would be, with what American officials was he communicating that to? What were their names? Could it have been Mr. Halper, Mr. Downer, Mr. Greenberg? Who was this Mr. Uh, uh, Sergei Mikhailov? Who was he communicating with in the American intelligence community, feeding this stuff, and exactly how was that all going down? What was going on with that? We need to learn a lot more, and I'm sure as Putin does, if that turns out to be damaging information, particularly to these intelligence agencies, or the FBI, or whoever, um, I'm sure that, uh, that Putin will pass that along to Trump. Or maybe the Russians will have their own little show trial and play the same game. This is typically what the Russians do. 
You do something to them, they do it back to you. They say, okay, you want to do that? We can do that. You want to do this? We can do this. We can do that too. And this is what you might see begin to happen now. You might start hearing about Russians arresting all kinds. Because typically, a guy like this, what they would do is they wouldn't arrest him. The Russians say, okay, this guy obviously is working for the CIA. In which case, then they would use him. They would say, okay, go ahead and let him get this intel. Let's start feeding him bad intel and let him feed bad intel to the Americans. And then let's just watch and see who he's communicating with. And let's just kind of follow that. And they'll try to get the whole chain. They'll try to get the whole chain. And then when they finally get as much as they think they can get, then they kill them all. <laughs> this guy's lucky. All he got was arrested. So that looks like the game that's on now. Well, loose Lisa Page. 13 hours of testimony. Apparently went pretty well. Despite the fact she she uh, does admit to being a Trump hater in the whole nine yards, but uh, there are some things we are learning. Uh, they're not talking much about it, but we have gotten some details, so I'm going to go through some of these things. Uh, they're kind of scattered about here in my notes, but we'll get through them. So 13 hours of testimony apparently went pretty well, according to most of the Republicans who were there uh, questioning. And we'll get back to some more of that in a minute, more details. But uh, in the meantime, we have a brand new mayor out in San Francisco, Francisco uh, because Mr. Mr. Newsom, uh, Gavin Newsom, is of course uh, running for governor, and so he uh, was the two-term mayor of San Francisco and uh, practically uh, con contributed greatly to destroying that city. So now they have a new mayor, <clears throat> and I believe it's a female, and I believe her name is London Breed. London, B-R-E-E-D, London Breed. And her one in one of her first statements, <laughs> she says that the streets of her city are drowning in poop, not dog poop. And so she's going to launch a campaign to teach the poopers how to clean up after themselves. Another local big government program. I wonder how much people in San Francisco have to pay uh, so that they can launch another left-wing <laughs> goody two-shoes uh, program to try to teach these street dwellers how to clean up after themselves after they poop. I don't know. Just as a point of logic, it would seem to me that the solution to that problem is porta potties. If you are going to hit the taxpayers and you are going to allow uh, this type of thing to happen on the streets, porta potties. What, are we supposed to believe these people don't know that you're not supposed to poop openly on the street? My God. How stupid can you be? Put some porta potties out. If you're going to let people just walk the streets by the gazillions, probably half of them illegal. God knows half, half of them mentally ill. Uh, God knows who these people are. But they're out there pooping on the streets. And this woman wants to have a program, a training program, to teach them uh, how to clean up after themselves. <laughs> they don't have anywhere to poop, you dumbass. <laughs> okay. John Ratcliffe. Very shrewd individual, former U.S. prosecutor, <clears throat> talking about what they were learning from the Page struck, or I mean the Page, Lisa Page, closed door sessions. Now, they can't talk about a lot of details, but there are little things leaking out. And one of the bombshells that have leaked out, and I think this came from Ratcliffe, it's being attributed to Ratcliffe, is that apparently Lisa Page. She is saying that those struck page texts mean exactly what they say. Hmm. That's not what Peter's been stroking has said. He said, oh, don't take those texts literally. They're just, you know, the type of things people do on social media. Didn't actually affect my job. Didn't actually affect the bias me or any way. Shouldn't even pay any attention to that stuff. Just, just. Nonsense. Don't pay any attention to it. Didn't mean didn't mean what it said. But Lisa Page is telling a totally different story. She is saying, no, no, no. Those texts meant exactly what they say. And, of course, uh, she's even suggesting that, yeah, there was real bias within the FBI and DOJ. They were, it was real bias. They really did hate Trump and wanted to uh, take out Trump and wanted to... Uh, uh, save Hillary from the Hooskow. Let's keep in mind, P 
Peter's been stroking us was under oath. Under oath. I would not be surprised after they go through Loose Lisa Page's testimony and of course they'll get a lot more names of people they want to talk to as a result of that. They'll interview a lot more witnesses and I would not be surprised in the next couple of weeks, maybe months, at some point here very soon that I would not be surprised to see Peter's been stroking us charged with contempt of Congress, lying to Congress. Lying to Congress, you can get a, a, a little, uh, a little uh, legal action, a little criminal action, a little jail action, a little fine action out of that sort of thing. Lying to Congress under oath. That appears to be what he was doing. And Lisa Page, because they both can't be telling it straight, Peter's been stroking us saying, oh, that you shouldn't take that seriously. Uh, you know, I really didn't mean all that stuff. I was just like, you know, I'm just saying crazy stuff because that's what people do on social media. And uh, Lisa Page is saying, no, no, no. We meant everything we said. We really did hate Trump, still hate Trump. Uh, and uh, so did everybody else, just as you're reading there in the in the text. It looks like a duck. It walks like a duck. It barks like a duck. It's a duck. That's what Loose Lisa Page is saying. Uh-oh, more bad news for the rotten reverend. There's a new Rasmussen poll out. In this Rasmussen poll, we learned that 73% of Democrats want a different nominee in 2020. 73% of Democrats want a different nominee in 2020. Only 16%, 16% want a candidate that has already run. I think they're talking about the Rotten Reverend. 58% of all voters polled believe that the Rotten Reverend Clinton is bad for the party. 39% of Dems think that the Rotten Reverend Clinton is bad for the party. And 63% of independents think the Rotten Reverend Clinton is bad for the Democrats. So if you have 58% of all voters think the Rotten Reverend is bad for the party, 39% of Democrats think she's bad for the party, and 63% of independents think the Rotten Reverend Clinton's bad for the Democrats, you would think that the Rotten Reverend Clinton would see those polls and there'll be other polls that reflect the same and that she would decide, well, <laughs> I guess I better not run. They really don't want me. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Nobody wanted her in 2016. <laughs> they didn't want her in 2012 or 20 or 2008 either. That's why she lost to Barack Obama and would lose to anybody, including Pat Paulson. Because, but the Rotten Reverend Clinton, what you have to understand is she knows this. She knows we hate her. She knows you hate her and I hate her and all those Dems hate her. She knows it. She knows she's not popular. She knows exactly what people think about her. She doesn't care. <laughs> these these elitists, I mean, they, they look at us like peasants. They really don't care. They just have to fool enough people or buy the election uh, or whatever they have to do, anything they have to do, lie, cheat, steal, uh, whatever it takes to get the power. Once they get the power, they, 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 they really don't care. They really don't care. She don't care about any Americans, not Democrats, not Independents, not Republicans, not left-wingers, not women, not children. She cares about nothing. The only thing the Rotten Reverend cares about is her power. Her power. That's all she cares about. And I can assure you that just because she sees the, she can see these exact polls and she can laugh. She probably look at that and laugh and go, ha, 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 really? Well, guess what? I'm going to be the nominee anyway in 2020 because I'm the only national Democrat with national recognition who can raise a billion dollars. So take that. Who was is Elizabeth Warren going to raise a billion? Nope. Is, uh, is Uncle Joe going to raise a billion? Nope. Besides, he's back in uh, the communist uh, Cortez. So, uh, you know, what, Bernie? No, we came up with a new rule that will keep Bernie out. So, basically, the Rotten Reverend Clinton, uh, she just holds these people, including her own, what would be, these people she's talking to, these Democrat voters that she talks to in these women's groups and all those, uh, she holds those people in disdain. Uh, she hates them people as much as she does us. I mean, as far as she's she calls us deplorables, but to her, all uh, the people are deplorable. They're all peasants. Uh, they're just, you know, the ones who buy into her lies. Uh, she uh, she is able to fool, and the people she can't fool, you know, she just gives them the bird. I mean, but this is not going to stop the rotten reverend. Uh, you, she could see a poll that said 100% of Democrats do not want her to run or do not want her to be the face of the party in 2020. She wouldn't care. She would just t chuckle and heckle and laugh and say, ha, 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 tough luck. 
I've got a, I've got a billion dollars. In fact, next time I'll have two billion dollars. I'll make sure of that, and um, I'll cheat whoever tries to get my way. If someone, if Elizabeth Warren tries to get my way, I'll run over her. I don't care. Go ahead and throw any Democrats you want in there. I'll run over every damn one of them. And if that doesn't work, I'll sick my my, my boys on them, and they'll be pushing up daisies. Don't get between me and my power. She doesn't care what Democratic voters want or anybody else wants. The rotten Reverend Clinton's going after that power. And trust me, she will never stop going after it until the day she dies. Till the day she dies. We are also learning from Luce Lisa Page. And I think this may have come from either Matt Gates or Louis Gohmert, one of the two. And this is actually bombshell stuff right here. If this is actually true, this is just kind of one of them leak things. But if this turns out to be true, um, yeah. So here it is. Apparently, they're learning from Lisa Page that the FBI hierarchy, meaning Priestep, Dishonorable James Comey, Andy McCabe, Peter's been stroking us, among others, covered up that China backed assets hacked the rotten Reverend Clinton's private email server and have got over 30,000 emails and that FBI bosses knew all about this breach into the rotten Reverend Clinton's private server and they covered it up. Not the Russians, China. Apparently, according to Luce Lisa Page, what's being leaked about her testimony behind closed doors is that the entire FBI hierarchy, Priestep Comey, McCabe, uh, uh, Ben Strokinus, and others in the top tier of the FBI and DOJ are covering up what they knew, what they learned about China, China-backed assets, hacking the rotten Reverend Clinton's private server and getting at least 30,000 emails from her server, including classified information, SAP programs. They're all on that server. And that the FBI bosses all the way up to the top knew all about it and before the election, this before the election, and uh, kept it quiet, covered it up. If that can be proven true, if that turns out to be true, if in fact that is, if that is true, then yeah, that's going to require a, a special counsel and an entire investigation just into that. And that will lead you everywhere. Again, her testimony could be very, very dangerous, very damaging. But you got to remember that she's not probably able to come completely clean because she would implicate herself in a lot of things. And so she's probably, my guess is what she's doing is buttering things up a bit to, to, to see, to feel this thing out because she is a pretty smart woman. She's obviously was a top DOJ lawyer uh, assigned to the FBI. She's obviously pretty smart, pretty good lawyer to be in that position. She's certainly smart enough to know and she knows the truth. Okay, so she knows that eventually this thing will unravel and she will ultimately find herself possibly facing criminal liability. Um, so, and she knows that the FBI and the DOJ have already signaled to her that they're not going to have her back. They're going to cover Peter's been stroking us, James Comey, uh, the intelligence community, and everybody else. But they're not going to be covering her back. They've already made that perfectly clear to her that she is the one that they were going to scapegoat. Now, uh, with all that in mind, I want to put out a poll question. I don't really do this uh, very often, but I'm going to do it tonight. So what I want to do is ask each and every one of you, it's a simple yes or no question, uh, the following, and just see how many of you in the comments section will answer this question. Just give me your thoughts on it, just your opinion. It can be just a yes or a no, or if you want to elaborate, that's fine too, as to why you think this. But I want to know from all of you in the comments section, if you would, uh, your yes or no answer to the following question. Will Loose Lisa Page seek an immunity deal? Will Loose Lisa Page seek an immunity deal? And what I will be talking about is as these things move further and it looks like it could go into a special counsel or maybe criminal referrals and things like that, will she begin to feel the heat and decide it's just time to come clean and become the John Dean of Spygate? 
So the question, will Lisa Lisa Page seek an immunity deal to protect her from prosecution? I'll check the comments for your answers. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.